As she entered, a hush fell over the room. Her classmates stared at her with a mixture of disgust and pity. Nana's heart began to race. What was going on? <coughs> Nana was the star student of Victoria Noble Academy, an all-girls secondary school known for its high standards. At 16 years old, she stood out not only for her striking beauty, but also for her intelligence. Nana had always been at the top of her class. Working hard to maintain her position as the most brilliant student, every day Nana would wake up early, put on her neat school uniform, and head to school with determination in her eyes. Her long black hair was always neatly tied in two top buns, and her face glowed with natural beauty that required no makeup. As she walked through the school gates, heads would turn and whispers would follow. There goes Nana, the other girls would say. Always perfect, always the best. But Nana paid no attention to these comments. Her focus was solely on her studies. In class, she sat at the front, eagerly absorbing every word the teachers said. Her hand was always the first to shoot up when a question was asked and her answers were always correct. However, Nana's beauty was becoming a distraction. Even the teachers found themselves staring at her during lessons. Mr. Thompson, the mathematics teacher, often stumbled over his words when explaining problems to Nana. Mr. Okafor, the literature teacher, couldn't help but admire Nana's graceful handwriting and thoughtful essays. Despite the attention, Nana remained oblivious. After school, while other students rushed home or to their various clubs, Nana would stay back in the classroom. She'd pull out her books, spread them on her desk, and dive into her studies. One evening, as the sun was setting and casting long shadows across the empty classroom, Nana was deeply engrossed in her literature textbook. She didn't notice when someone entered the room. Nana, you're still here, a voice called out. Nana looked up to see Aisha, one of her classmates, standing at the door. Oh, hi Aisha, Nana said with a smile. Yes, I'm just finishing up some extra reading. Aisha walked over to Nana's desk, her eyes scanning the pile of books. She shook her head and let out a small laugh. Nana, Aisha said, if I was as beautiful as you, I wouldn't stress myself studying all the time. You could easily get favors from the teachers who admire you. Nana's eyebrows furrowed in confusion. What do you mean? Aisha grinned mischievously. Haven't you noticed how the teachers look at you, especially Mr. Thompson and Mr. Okafor? You could probably get good grades without all this extra work. Nana was shocked. She had never thought about using her looks for any advantage. But that wouldn't be right, she protested. Aisha shrugged. It's just a thought. Anyway, I'm heading home. Don't stay too late, okay? As Aisha left, Nana sat there, her mind swelling with this new idea. She had always believed in hard work and honesty. But was Aisha right? Could life be easier if she used her beauty to her advantage? With these thoughts weighing on her mind, Nana packed up her books and headed home. The streets were quiet as she walked, the street lights casting a soft glow on the pavement. She couldn't shake off Aisha's walls, and for the first time, she began to see her beauty as something more than just a physical attribute. When Nana reached home, her parents greeted her with warm smiles. They were proud of their daughter's achievements and had always encouraged her studies. But tonight, Nana was distracted during dinner, her mind still pondering over Aisha's suggestion. In her room, instead of opening her books as she usually did, Nana stood in front of her mirror. She studied her reflection, noting her clear skin, bright eyes, and gentle features. Had she been blind to the power she held? As she lay in bed that night, Nana made a decision. Tomorrow, she would try something different. She would see if Aisha was right about the power of her beauty. Little did Nana know, this decision would set in motion a series of events that would change her life forever. The next morning, Nana woke up earlier than usual. 
she stood in front of her mirror, hesitating for a moment before reaching for her makeup kit, a birthday gift she had never used. With trembling hands, she applied a light layer of foundation, a touch of blush, and a swipe of lip gloss. She let her hair down, allowing it to fall in soft waves around her shoulders. As Nana walked into the school compound, she could feel the difference immediately. More heads turned than usual, and the whispers seemed louder. Even some of the teachers did a double take as she passed by. In Mr. Thompson's math class, Nana decided to put Aisha's theory to the test. When the teacher handed out a surprise quiz, Nana felt a moment of panic. She hadn't studied for this, but then she remembered Aisha's words. As Mr. Thompson collected the papers, Nana looked up at him and smiled sweetly. Mr. Thompson, she said softly, I hope I did well on the quiz. I really want to maintain my good grades in your class. Mr. Thompson seemed flustered. I'm sure you did fine, Nana. You're my best student after all. The next day, when Mr. Thompson returned the graded quizzes, Nana was surprised to see a perfect score on her paper. She knew she hadn't answered all the questions correctly. Could Aisha have been right? Encouraged by this, Nana tried the same approach with other teachers. A smile here, a kind word there, and suddenly she found herself getting good grades on tests she hadn't studied for. At first, it felt like a relief. She could finally get some rest instead of staying up all night studying. As the days passed, Nana found herself relying more and more on her looks. She studied less, confident that a smile or a flutter of her eyelashes would be enough to maintain her top position. And for a while, it worked, but Nana didn't notice the growing resentment among her classmates. Girls who had once admired her now whispered behind her back. They saw how the teachers favored her, how she seemed to breeze through tests without the hard work they all put in. Aisha watched all of this with a mixture of satisfaction and jealousy. She had set this plan in motion, but she hadn't expected Nana to be so successful at it. As Nana's grade stayed high while her study time decreased, Aisha's envy grew. One afternoon as Nana was leaving school, she overheard two teachers talking in an empty classroom. She paused outside the door, listening. Have you noticed how Nana's been acting lately? It was Mr. Okafor's voice. Yes, it's quite a change, replied Miss Thompson. She seems to be using her charms more. It's becoming a problem, Mr. Okafor said. The other students are starting to complain. They think we are showing favoritism. Well, can you blame us? Mr. Thompson chuckled. She's a beautiful young woman. But you're right. We need to be careful. Maybe we can lure her to a hotel during the weekend. You know, deal with her outside the school premises. Nana's heart raced as she hurried away from the door. For the first time, she felt a twinge of guilt and fear. What had she gotten herself into? That night, Nana couldn't sleep. She tossed and turned, thinking about what she had heard. The teachers were noticing her behavior, and worse, they seemed to expect something in return for their favors. This wasn't what she had intended when she started this experiment. The next day at school, Nana felt uncomfortable under the gaze of her teachers. Every smile, every compliment, now seemed loaded with expectation. She realized that she had opened a door she didn't know how to close. After school, Nana sought out Aisha. She found her friend lounging under a tree in the schoolyard, scrolling through her phone. Aisha, I need to talk to you, Nana said, her voice trembling slightly. Aisha looked up, a sly smile on her face. What's up, beauty queen? Enjoying your new life. I think I've made a mistake. The teachers... They're starting to want more than just smiles for the favors they're doing me. What do you mean? She asked. I overheard them talking, Nana explained. They're expecting something from me. I don't know what to do. This has gone too far. Aisha was quiet for a moment. Then she leaned in close. 
Listen, Nana. You've come this far. Don't back out now. If the teachers want more, give them what they want. Nana recoiled in shock. What? No, I can't do that. Why not? Aisha pressed. It's just a little further. Think about all the benefits you've been getting. Do you want to give that up? No, Aisha. This is wrong. I never should have started this. I'm going to stop it now. As Nana walked away, she didn't see the dark look that crossed Aisha's face. She didn't know that her decision to stop would set off a chain of events that would turn her life upside down. The next morning, Nana woke up determined to set things right. She tied her hair back in its usual two ponytails and went to school without any makeup. She was ready to face the consequences of her actions and return to her old ways of hard work and honesty. But as soon as she stepped into the school compound, she knew something was wrong. Students were gathered in small groups, whispering and pointing at her. Confused and worried, Nana made her way to her classroom. As she entered, a hush fell over the room. Her classmates stared at her with a mixture of disgust and pity. Nana's heart began to race. What was going on? It was Aisha who finally broke the silence. Well, well, she said loudly. If it isn't our male teacher's pet, or should I say, little hole, Nana felt as if she had been slapped. What are you talking about? Aisha stood up, a cruel smile on her face. Oh, come on, Nana. Everyone knows what you've been doing to get those good grades. Sleeping with the teachers. That's low, even for you. Nana's words seemed to spin. That's not true, she cried out. I never did anything like that. But her protest fell on deaf ears. The rumor had spread like wildfire through the school. Just then, Miss Agatha, the school principal, appeared at the classroom door. Her face was stern and her voice cold as she said, Nana, come with me to my office immediately. As Nana followed Miss Agatha through the corridors, she could feel the stares of everyone they passed. Tears welled up in her eyes. In the principal's office, Miss Agatha didn't mince words. Nana, I've heard some very disturbing rumors about your behavior with me, teachers. This is a serious accusation, but it's not true, Nana pleaded. I never did anything like that. Yes, I... I tried to use my looks to get better grades, but I never went further than that. I swear, Miss Agatha's expression remained hard. Whether it's true or not, the damage has been done. Parents are calling, threatening to withdraw their children if you remain in this school. You've become a liability, Nana. Nana felt as if the floor had dropped out from under her. What? What does that mean? It means, Miss Agatha said with a sigh, that we have no choice but to expel you from Victoria Noble Academy. The words hit Nana like a physical blow, expelled. Her perfect record, her dreams of graduating at the top of her class, all gone in an instant. As Nana left the principal's office, her world in shambles, she saw Aisha standing in the corridor, a triumphant smirk on her face. In that moment, Nana realized the full extent of her friend's betrayal. The next few days passed in a blur of tears and arguments. Nana's parents were devastated by the news of her expulsion. They didn't believe the rumors, but they were angry and disappointed that Nana had tried to use her looks for academic gain. We raised you better than this, her father said, his voice heavy with disappointment. Nana's mother was more practical. We need to find you a new school, she said. You can't let this setback ruin your future. And so, after days of searching, that we accept an SS2 student, Nana's parents managed to enroll her in Ika High School, a public school that was a far cry from the prestigious Victoria Noble Academy. As Nana stood at the gates of Ika High School on her first day, she felt like a different person. The confident top of the class Nana was gone, replaced by a girl who felt lost and alone. But as she took a deep breath and stepped into the school compound, 
she made a silent vow to herself. This was her second chance. A chance to prove that she was more than just a pretty face. A chance to show the world and herself that she could succeed on her own merits. Little did Nana know that her journey at Ika High School would bring its own set of challenges and revelations. This was just the beginning of Nana's story.